We're back, exclusive. Lightning. <laughs> we got the exclusive. What happened with Aaron Coley's fight with Jamonte Clark? No one was able to see it. I guess some people maybe filmed it if they were there, they witnessed it live, but unfortunately there was no distribution of the fight. I think a lot of Bay Area boxing people are very curious to get uh, the perspective of Aaron, but really just the fight in general because it was a high quality fight between two great athletes. Two guys, you know, knocking at the door, uh, world class fighters. First off, got to give a big, big shout out to Jamonte Clark for taking the fight, for giving Aaron an opportunity to show, you know, what he's about, where he's at, and then ultimately to showcase his talent. Um, you know, the fight, you know, from our perspective, pretty much we were in control of, of uh, most of the fight. Um, there are a couple rounds we took off that, that we lost, but. For, from my perspective, you know, I thought that we we dictated the pace and landed the bigger shots in all the other rounds. Um, not crying about the decision, you know, split decision. One judge, just, you know, one judge saw what I saw, which was us winning, and the other two had him winning by one round. You know, so razor thin margin. Uh, coming off a two year layoff, I, I, I couldn't be more happy uh, knowing that we we could still fight on a world class level against a really good opponent who had a draw with Sebastian Fandora who just knocked out Erickson Lubin. So that says a lot about, you know, the, the level we're at. Yeah, and I think that the other thing is Aaron's at a point where I think he has some weird stat where he has like three or four split decisions, I think, or majority in split decisions. So the the breakdown basically is he either all his wins are by knockout or unanimous decision and all his losses under me his three losses under me are all split, including one very bizarre draw that was announced to draw, then later changed to a split decision loss six months later in Africa. Um, you know, that being said, it it it's it's kind of like a, like a like like a criminal case in court. You know, there's reasonable doubt whenever there's a split decision. You got to look at it and say, hmm. Why did one judge think the guy won and the other two thought the other guy won? And so, you know, when there's always that doubt, it kind of just leaves room open for, for a debate. And, you know, debatably, he's a fighter that's definitely in the mix and, and deserves to earn a living and, and fight on, on those type of platforms, a major platform like PBC. Well, I think that the, the spot he kind of is in now is he's a guy that's going to be challenging the people that are at the brink of wanting to be in the world title, world contention picture, and his opportunities would be coming as, can he beat one of these emerging guys who's trying to make this step to the next level because he's proven he can be at that level. Can he beat, yeah, the emerging guys. Um, he's not, in my opinion, quite a gatekeeper yet because of the doubt, the split decisions. Um, Obviously, we all know when you come in on the B side, you got to win a little bit more impressive, impressively. So, to me, you know, he's still got life, kind of like Ray Beltran. He's still got life to become a world champion. It just takes one night, one night and some circumstance, a little bit of luck, and you can be catapulted into that mix. And, you know, he also can, I think, get a fight like, Let's say Erickson Lubin came back and he wanted to fight his way back into contention. Aaron Coley would be a perfect guy, a lefty, you know, um, that has some history with, with the guy he lost to and, and is obviously uh, not a huge puncher, but someone that, that you know, they might think that they could take risks with to, to make a comeback fight. So I see like guys like that. And obviously, like you said, um, fighters who are looking to pass, you know, the test to get to that next level would, would have to get past Aaron Coley. Yeah, I mean, even like a guy like Tony Harrison, you know, if he's looking to do a hometown fight, a guy like Tony Southpaw, I believe a lot of the big fighters at that division, that's a guy. I mean, I think there's a lot of fights to be made. It just comes down to will the opportunities be there for Aaron. Aaron reminds me of Tevin Farmer a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, but Tevin Farmer got his shot, and he got to become world champion. That's the but only that's difference. That's what I'm saying. Is like, I'm, I see, he reminds me of a guy where 
people know how good he is. It just comes down to will there be an opportunity for him to show his skills? Yeah, or like Nate Campbell, the Galaxy Warrior, you know, or Emmanuel Burton. I pointed that out to Aaron. Uh, even Gabe Rosado. You know, Gabe is like, what, 24 and 15? I mean, it's he has a lot of losses, but he's a proven world-class fighter. And so the whole nostalgia of the O, the, you know, that's everybody wants the O. We have four losses on the on, on our record now. So it's like I told him, win, lose, or draw. We want to go out there. We're not going to cry about decisions, you know. And we're just going to perform and do our best, showcase our skills, and, and continue to get fights. And hopefully it can lead to, you know, bigger and better things. Ultimately, you know, a, a world championship because that's, you know, the ultimate accolade in this sport. Or an eliminator fight, or just some form of a belt would be um, nice. Any notable moments that you'd like that stood out about the fight for you? Um, yeah, I, I told him, you know, he lost. It, it might, this, don't quote me on this because I don't remember the exact round, but it was one of the rounds, like, I think it was around the fifth, he lost the round, right? He basically took the round off. And I told him, I said, man, you lost that round. And then he put together. Uh, a string of combinations throughout the next round that just like to me showed that he was better you know he, he was able to really really step on the gas and force his will and force his, his um his technique to work and I was and I was like really proud of the, the you know it was two times when he did I was proud of him for being able to you know kind of just say fuck it and and and, and show that that he could he could do it and not be hesitant and not not doubt himself, and he, he did it you know several times during the fight, and um, man I was just happy for him that he you know he's still in the mix he's still he's proven that he still got it. Uh, Sam Watson came up to him and told him you know you you won the fight but you didn't whoop him and those were his exact words. He said he said you didn't whoop him and 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 we agreed you know he he didn't whoop him, but you know we we felt like we won obviously. You know, like perspective is perspective, or respect the judge's opinion, whatever. <clears throat> We're entitled to ours too, though. You know. What was it like fighting on that type of venue, um, that stage? Obviously, one of the most exciting 154 pounds fights in some time, probably since Charlo Castano. We haven't seen an action-packed, exciting fight in that division at a similar level. What was it like fighting on that card? The locker rooms, all the way to the the environment. Around so, so for us, it was like, it was like royalty. You know, we had the great Bob Ware, uh, our cut man. Um, you know, working our cuts and wrapping our hands. We're in the, we're in the. Uh, we had a, a private dressing room with Roy Jones and his fighter. So we were cracking jokes with Roy, and it, you know, it, it was awesome. I mean, it, you know, and then and then the fight itself. Um, we did so good, like we couldn't, we, we had a, a small, like, you know, a 15 minute window where we were kind of depressed and down and out for a second. Then we had to remind ourselves of like what we just did and it, it kind of took the sting away. And then, and then going back into the crowd and all the, all the fans and different, you know, world-class fighters walking around and people we knew in the crowd um, and watching those tremendous fights, Tony Harrison, you know, had a had a had a good fight, a, a really challenging fight, uh, with the guy who only had like he had a 33 and one record. Um, his fight was way harder than it looked. And then, obviously, getting to watch Lubin, who I'm a big fan of, you know, um, struggle, come back, and then ultimately, you know, have to retire, you know, due to his his injuries. I think his jaw was broken in his nose. He he was pretty busted up. Um, in in defeat, though, he showed a lot of heart. And you know his corner stopped that fight. He didn't quit. He didn't want to stop. Um, he he was he was willing to die in there. It was it was, it was amazing. 